give our thanks today, God, for all that you've done in our hearts and our lives. And we just want to give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 God is definitely good to us. How many love Jesus today? Amen. amen. God has blessed us with a beautiful day to be here in the house of the Lord. And you know what? God, God deserves all of our praise and adoration. Amen. amen. Be mindful of the service tonight at 6.30 p.m. Come praying, come believing, see what God has in store for us. And then also continue to pray for those that are deployed. There's so many that are gone over there overseas right now. And so pray for them that God will keep his hand upon them and bring them back safely. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In the meantime, the rest of us can continue to continue on living for God, doing what God would have us to do. And let's just love God, serve God, and be what God wants us to be. All right? Amen. At this time, the brothers are going to come to help us to receive the Sunday morning tithe and the Sunday morning worship offering. All Christians do pay tithe. Amen? Amen. As commanded by the word of the Lord, and the church is supported by the tithe and the offerings. And so you give, and God will bless you. If you're watching online, or even if you're here, you can give online at www.myntcc.org slash Junction City KS, or if you have Cash App, which is very convenient, dollar sign NTCC Junction City. And so give us unto the Lord, and God will bless you as you give to him. And as I already said, the tithe and the offering goes to support the work of the Lord here in the insurance and the payments and the electricity, all the above, all these different things. And so really, really consider giving to God, and, and God will bless you for that. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if we do what God tells us to do, God will bless us. Amen? Amen. Because God is a God of blessings. Amen. Amen. So today, let's receive a good love offering, worship offering as unto the Lord. Brother Ron, would you please pray, ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for each and every soul that you brought out this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. Most of all, Lord, we pray that you bless the gift and the giver. In the mighty Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for your giving. God bless you for it. Amen. Yeah. Let's not forget about Bible study Tuesday night, 730 p.m. Come to Bible study. Amen. Amen. You might just learn something about God. Amen. Yeah. And I'll we'll have a good time fellowshipping one with another. Amen. I'd like to read to you, first of all, Brother Ron, turn this back, the one down just, just a tad, please. Great. Thanks. Just psych, psych. He'd really turn me down, didn't he? So I got the preacher now, I'll just turn him off all the way. <laughs> Some, sometimes people are probably wishing that he would. Anyway, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And then Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. And I'd like to preach to you for a little while this morning on the title of a message, Jesus Saves. Amen. How many are glad that Jesus saves this morning? Amen. Reverend Palmer, sir, please stand and pray.
Father, this morning we give you the praise for this service, Lord. We thank you for each and every one that is here, Lord. Continue, oh God, to move amongst of us and your people and have your way in our hearts and our lives this morning. Continue, oh God, to draw us closer unto you. And most importantly, Lord, we ask you to save that which is lost this morning. Be with Pastor now as he preaches unto us the word of eternal life. We give you all the glory and praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to begin this service today by posing a sincere, heartfelt question to each of you. Take a moment, I really want you to ponder the question. And some of you may answer quickly, some of you may answer not so quickly. And the quest question is, how does a man or a woman gain salvation? How do we gain salvation? I was talking with someone some years ago, and even as of recently, the question came up, that they did not know really how to get saved. They did not know how to obtain salvation, and they wondered at what point is a person saved. Now, when I say saved, that I'm talking about being delivered from the bonds of sin and delivered from the world and being living and living your life for Jesus Christ. Amen? Being saved, being born again, being delivered is all synonymous. Yet to realize that there are multitudes of people who will perish in their sins and they are lost forever in hell. Because they are ignorant of the answer to this all important question of how to gain salvation. Many times people, they think, well, salvation will come by my good works or it will come by, by baptism or by religious training or by some other emotional experience or by the things that I do for the church. But that is not what saves us this morning. Salvation is not found in those things. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us plainly in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. He said, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Praise God. How many believe in Jesus this morning? He said, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I don't know about you today, but I am thankful for the gift of Almighty God. Amen. Salvation comes from Christ. So my next questions I have for you, serious questions. Have you given your life to the Lord. Do you have the assurance right now in this service, right at this very moment, if you were to die, do you have the assurance that you would go straight to heaven? Now, these are some serious questions. Are you ready? The Bible tells us, be ready therefore also, because we do not know when Jesus is coming again. And rest assured, Jesus is coming again. Now, we all know that we are living in unsure times, uncertain times, and unemployment is up, wages are down. You know, people can't complain there's no work because everybody's hiring right now. Amen? Amen. The economy is messed up. All kinds of th crazy things are going on. We don't know what's going to happen one day or the next, but I want you to know there is one thing that is sure, one thing that is fixed, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that our God is not shaken by the things of our government or by our world. Our God is rock steady all the way. Amen. I understand that we are living in difficult times. And I understand that things are messed up. But this does not give us an excuse before the Lord. We can't say, well, God, you know, I would have given my life to you, but COVID-19... It seems like now everything is blamed upon COVID-19. Now watch out. The Delta variant is coming your way. Sounds like a movie or something. You ever see those movies back, you know, back to over the years called Pandemic or about some kind of strange virus? It seems like it's coming to pass now, doesn't it? But, you know, just because of COVID-19, does God give us an excuse not to live for God? Can I get a witness? I asked you if you had this assurance in your life right now. Now, honestly, honestly, you don't have to answer out loud or whatever. Be truthful. Are you ready to go to heaven? Are you ready right now? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. You don't have to answer out loud, but are you ready? Honestly, right now, are you ready to go to heaven? 
And here we preach the way that we preach, we teach the way that we teach, is because we want you to go to heaven. And we desire for you to go to heaven. And we desire for every one of you to know Jesus in a reality. If you are saved and you are ready to go to heaven, well, praise God, we need to pray for those who are not ready. Amen? If you are not ready to go to heaven, well, praise, praise God also. In this service, I want to tell you how that Jesus saves. We're going to tell you right now that our God is able to forgive us of our sins. How do you know, preacher? Because 38 years ago, my God forgave me of mine. And if God can forgive me, well, bless your heart, God can forgive you. To those of you that already know, let this be a reminder. Let this be a refresher of what God has done for us. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Hallelujah. Also. If you already know Jesus, this will be a reminder to you to, to give answer to those that do not know if you're approached with the situation. Jesus saves. Amen? Amen? So first of all, what we have to do is we have to admit our sins. Now this is a hard thing to do sometimes, is it not? Yes, sir. One of the first things that you have to understand that is if you do not know Jesus in a reality as your personal Lord and Savior... You are a sinner. Now, that's not popular. So I went to church and the pastor called me a sinner. If you do not know Jesus in a reality, you are a sinner. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, he said this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us in here have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Can I get an overwhelming witness on that this morning? All of us have sinned. That means that all of us have fallen short of God's standard, and we have missed the goal. Amen? We have missed it. The, the Bible said there is none righteous, no, not one. We need Jesus in our lives. I need Jesus in my life. You need Jesus in your life. He said there is none that doeth good, no, not one. You know what? Your good deeds and your self-righteousness of man, it's in vain. What did God say in Isaiah 64 and 6? All our righteousness are as filthy rags. We have no righteousness. We say, well, I'm a good person, uh, and I do this, and I do that. Well, praise God, but our righteousness falls short of what God demands in our life. That means that we have to lay down our unrighteousness, if you will so-called say that, and then put on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Again, we need Jesus in our life. Yeah. It's absolutely useless. For a sinner to depend upon their good works to make them acceptable in the eyes of God. So many times people try to live a Christian life without Christ. Trying to do the outward things. But you see, it doesn't do them any good. Our good works. You might be the best person at doing things and helping people and giving things. But you know what? Our good works are not enough to get us to heaven. Sorry, right. All right, say, so, well, you might be wondering why every person who does not know Jesus is a sinner. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, by one man, sin entered into the world. This one man was Adam. If I ever saw Adam, I just need to give him a good knuckle sandwich. <laughs> it's his fault that we face some of the things that we face. We're all descendants of Adam. And just as physical likeness is passed down from generation to generation, even so moral likeness is passed down. You know what? It's because of Adam. All the way back there in the Garden of Eden, we can't really blame me. It was Adam's fault. He should have stood up and said, no, we're not going to do this. But he did not. He did the wrong thing. So now that nature has been passed down to us. That's why we need Jesus in our life. Hence the word being born again. The first nature we were born with was wrong. It was sinful. It was unrighteous. But now, because of Jesus in our life, we are born again. We are made new. We have a new nature. A godly nature instead of a sinful nature. We were once sinners, but now we are saints on our way to heaven if you know Jesus in a reality. Amen. Every sinner, unless he accepts the one true remedy, will spend eternity separated from God. 
So what's, what's the big deal about that preacher? Separated eternally in a literal burning hell. This preacher don't talk about hell. That's not socially acceptable. That's not politically correct. Well, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. Hell is a reality, and people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about that, that there's something that's not so good on the other side, if you will, but we need to be ready so that we don't have to go to this place. Amen? Amen. Please do not doubt the following verses from God's word. He said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now, this is the word of God. These are not my words. He said, sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. He said, the wages of sin is dead. He said, if ye believe not, ye shall die in your sins. He said, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And he said, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into a lake of fire. It's real. Just as much as God is real, the love of God is real, the mercy of God is real, I want you to know there's a flip side to that. You know what? There is a hell, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to hell. Amen? I'm not serving God just for a fire escape. I'm serving God because I love him, but I want you to know if we do right, God will bless us. We must come to the place and come to terms honestly about our spiritual condition. You know what? It's time to face the facts. You know, no one wants to be told they're a sinner. Nobody wants to be told they're on their way to hell. But we need to face the facts. Amen? Amen. Right. Admit. Admit your sins. And then, number two, you have to abandon self-effort. I already touched on it briefly. You have to understand that you cannot save yourself by your own efforts. The Bible is very clear. Titus chapter 3 Titus chapter 3, verse 5. He said, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, praise God, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen? Amen. And then Ephesians 2, I already read to you verse 8. Let's do 8 and 9 now. For by grace are ye saved through faith. How many believe in God? Amen. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What did he say there in verse 9? Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's because of the grace, this amazing grace, this amazing love of Almighty God. Our works do not save us. Well, pastor, I gave money. I worked around the church. Praise God. Thank you for it. But that does not get you into heaven. Amen. We need to be saved by grace. Salvation is a work of free and almighty grace. You know what? Our salvation was accomplished by Jesus Christ dying upon a cross for us. Now, if we were saved by our works, if we could just work our way into heaven and do good things to get into heaven, Jesus would have never had to come die upon a cross for us. We sang that song this morning at Calvary. How many are really thankful for the cross at Calvary? Or is it just something that we look at every Sunday morning? Oh, isn't the cross beautiful? Isn't it nice up there on the wall? I want you to know this cross is a whole lot nicer than the one that Jesus died upon. And we look at these things and we take it for granted. We sing about it. We talk about it. People hang their crosses around their neck, whatever. They may hang, hang them on the wall of their homes. That's all well and good. That's what you want to do. But you know what? We have to remember what was done, what was accomplished upon the cross at Calvary. And our salvation was purchased for us. It was there for us. It's there for us to enjoy. It's there for us to appropriate into our lives. And if we were saved by our works, Jesus would never have to die upon that cross. But thanks be unto God that he did. And the Bible said the blood was shed for many for the remission of sins. And now our sins can be taken away. They can be washed away. And we can say, praise God. God, I'm on my way to heaven. Mankind needed a savior. And God in his great 
magnificent, majestic love and mercy provided one by his dear son, Jesus Christ. He gave the very best that heaven had to offer. Him, his son said, I'll go, Father. I'll pay the price. I'll do what needs to be done. And because of that, we have the opportunity to be here in his house today and say, God, I want you in my life. Jesus, I want you to save me. And I'm going to tell you right now, when we have that attitude, Jesus saves. The Savior has been provided. Let me tell you something right now. You cannot be your own Savior. Oh, I'm a self-made man. Well, you can be a self-made man all the way to hell, too. Hell is real, but so is heaven. I don't need God. That's a horrible place to be in your life. Because we all need Jesus. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the only way. Admit. Abandon. And number three, acknowledge Christ's payment. The third thing is that you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he died for our sins. I really believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he was born of a virgin. I believe that he came to set mankind free. He suffered and he died as our substitute at Calvary, satisfying the demands of justice in our place. Do you realize it should have been us hanging upon that cross? Jesus was not guilty. It was you and I. We're the guilty ones. Oh, not me, preacher. Yes, you. Yes, me. We were all guilty, remember? All have sinned. All right, come on now. Wait at me. All have sinned, right? All have sinned. That means that there was a death sentence hanging over our head. But hallelujah, God made a way, oh, hallelujah, for us to be set free. Amen. We are free. Yes. We're free if we've accepted Jesus. Yes. He suffered and died as our substitute at Calvary. Yes. Justice demanded something to happen, and Christ paid that. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commended, or God showed us his love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Now think about that. While we were sinners, when we were out there living in sin away from God, Christ died for us. God showed us his love. That means he died in our place. We had a debt. Death's horrible, is it not? Your sin debt has been paid, how? By the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from what? All sin. I'm glad that God does it right the first time. Amen? All of our sin. It's better than tide. Amen? Are you all awake this morning? Better than tide pods, right? The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. He arose from the grave for our justification and now ascended to glory as our triumphant king. Jesus is our king. Amen. He sat down in heaven, having, having finished the work of salvation. Christ died. And he, he did all of this for us voluntarily because he is gracious. You know, I like this because God the Father did not force him to die for us. He came willingly. He said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He did it all for us. The remedy for sin is not another human being. The remedy is not money. The Bible said, ye are not redeemed with silver and gold. We have been redeemed. We have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you realize that without the shedding of blood, we have no atonement? Without the shedding of blood, we have no salvation. Without the shedding of blood, we have no hope. The blood needed to be shed, and it was shed for us that we might be saved. Jesus didn't spill his blood upon the cross. He shed his blood upon the cross. There is a difference. When you spill something, that means it was done by accident. It was no accident, Jesus dying for us. It was a deliberate act of love. It was a deliberate act of mercy that you and I might have a way to go to heaven. And it's time that we say, and, and say, all right, God, I'm going to embrace this. I'm going to believe this. I'm going to let it be a part of my life. I'm tired of being this way. I need a change. I need to be saved. I'm glad to tell you today that Jesus 
saves. The remedy for sin is not by works. We already discussed that. But the remedy is only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you tired of being in bondage to sin? Come to Jesus. The Bible says, very familiar, John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. He said this, we know, for God so loved the world. Now, aren't you glad that God loves you? There might be people around you that don't love you, but God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave, what? His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. How many believe in Jesus? Amen. All right, there's no reason why any of you should perish then. Right. If you believe in Jesus, I like that where it said, should not perish. Look right there. Look at that. Should not perish. It didn't, say, it didn't say you shall not perish. If you believe, you should not perish. Even the devils believe and they tremble. You think they're saved? No. If we believe in Jesus, there's no reason why we should perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through that, but that the world through him might be saved. Yeah. Jesus made a way. Christ literally became our sin bearer and he took our place and he died for our sins. And I like to think, wait a minute, God died for my sins. Yes. And I want you to know there was a bunch of them too. Right. I'm being honest. He died. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He knew no sin. The only thing that Jesus was guilty of was love. Love in the first degree for us. And we are so unthankful. We are so unappreciative. Come on now. Yes. Of all that Christ has done for us. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, it says, God, rather, it says, Christ died for our sins. He wasn't wrong. We're the ones that are wrong. We're the ones that needed a sacrifice. We're the ones that needed a Savior. It should have been us upon the cross that day, but Christ took our place. Does that not mean anything to people anymore? We need to stop. I taught this when I first got here about having a vision of Calvary. We need to stop. And we need to understand what Christ has done for us. We get caught up so many times in our lives and the business of life. And we give God a little bit of our time, like we're going to tip God. You know, it should be the other way around. We should live for God wholeheartedly. And we are to love him with all of our heart, and all of our mind, and all of our soul. And we stop and realize what Christ did for us upon the cross, the cross of Calvary. It'll change your outlook. It'll change your way of life. It'll change the way that you approach things. And my prayer is that today that you would embrace that. I'm talking about being ready to go to heaven. I'm talking about repenting and being saved. And Jesus is the only one that can save you. We acknowledge what he did for us. Acknowledge what he did. I talk to people day in and day out, and it seems as though they don't care. It's like, whatever. It's just a preacher. He just wants us to go to church. You know why I want you to go to church? It's so you can learn about God so you can go to heaven. It's not just so I can count you. That's not the issue. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to go, go to heaven. I want you to be right with God, and I, I want you to be blessed of the Lord. That's why we want you to come, so that together we can approach the Lord and together we can connect as we connect with him and do what God wants us to do as a community of believers. Amen. And then lastly, accept him as Savior. The fourth thing you need to do is to put your faith in Christ and trust him for your salvation. 
The blood of Christ does you no good until you receive him by faith. It'll do you no good. The blood is there. It's not going to help you until you accept it. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Simple as that. Amen. Will you right now, today, take your place realizing that you are a lost sinner and confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Will you do that today? The gift of God already shared is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Will you take that place today? And I like where it said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't you ever feel guilty over your sins? Don't you ever feel sorrow for your sins? That sometimes is the problem. People don't feel guilt. They just do what they want to do, live how they want to live, conduct their life how they want to conduct their life, and they feel no sorrow and they feel no guilt. Does it not bother you when you come short of what God wants in our lives. And if it does, we need to do something about it. And if it doesn't bother you, how long are you going to sear your conscience? How long are you going to make your heart calloused? The Bible tells us there was a time when God winked at ignorance. But now he tells us he commanded all men everywhere to repent. I'm not on your case this morning, but you know what? Because all of us have to repent. And there's not a one of us that are perfect. But we have to work at it, church. Amen. We have to work at it. And that's the problem. Some of you are not working at it. I'm not talking about working for salvation. I'm talking about working our life, living the way God wants us to live. After we have enjoyed our salvation. We have to put some effort into it. And it should bother us when we do wrong. It should bother us when we come up short. Can I get a witness? Yes, a person who never repents will be lost forever. And when we truly repent, there's going to be a change in our life. Amen? We are going to head in a different direction. We have to do the right thing. I have to do the right thing. You have to do the right thing if we ever plan to go to heaven. How many want to go to heaven? Repentance is more than just being sorry over your sin. It is a change of mind. It involves turning from sin and turning away from that sin. And now we're going to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, that's what we need to do today. And if ever the world needs to see a reality in Jesus. Yes, amen. Christ is the one that saves. And he's the only one that can save us. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Jesus is the only way. Right. Jesus is the only way. Amen. Jesus is the only way. Amen. How much clearer can it be? Jesus saves. This salvation must be received by faith. If we are going to enjoy the blessings of grace and salvation and eternal life, we must come to Christ as guilty sinners by faith, relying upon Him alone as our Savior. Now understand, faith is not our Savior, but our faith in Christ. Christ is our Savior. But without faith, there is no salvation. All right, we believe God, amen? If you don't believe this right here, the words of God, you're not going to be saved. If you don't believe or have faith in these words, you're not going to make it to heaven. We have to have faith, amen? Now, faith is not our Savior, but faith in these words and the one that these words that these words represent, this is what saves us. Jesus saves. The promise is to them that believe. How many believe today? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. He 
if you are willing to repent, and if you're willing to accept Jesus as your Savior, Jesus has promised that he will not turn you aside. John chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I came to God with all my sin, stained, dirty, and filthy. And God saved me. Many times you think I've done too many things wrong and too, too many things bad. God won't accept me. Wait till I clean my life up first. Then I'll, then I'll come to God. No, that's backwards. Come to God. He already knows what you are. Yes. He already knows what's going on in your life. He wants to save you. Mm -hmm. 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse 9. Bible says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to repent. Amen. He loves you this morning. Amen. Jesus saves. Admit your sin. Abandon self-effort. Acknowledge Christ's payment and accept him as Savior. Admit, abandon, acknowledge, and accept. Jesus saves. Amen. As you bow your heads, please, and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord. Jesus saves.